guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. Someone said they wanted to see John Hume, so here he is. And he's actually a very well-rounded player um, in the sense that his attribute analysis is fairly well-rounded. Um, despite the defending being a bit low, which is interesting considering his tackling is 10, his marking is 11, and his heading is... He's not that bad defensively either. He kind of... Get you a guy who can do it all, and we've got old Johnny Hume. His lowest stat is his long throws at 7, and his lowest sort of important stat that actually matters when he's sort of on the pitch is probably his long shots at nine. He is such a well-rounded player at 21 years old, uh, worth 7.25 million pounds as well. I'm a huge fan of John Hume. Um, I've always, always have been really ever since he came through. And I really do think he's got a bright future at the club. Perhaps not ever being a world beater, but still, he's not bad, is he really? We'll see what he's like when he turns 22, though, and they reassess. Nickname for Nikolai. How about the guard dog? Now, I had loads of suggestions for Nick uh, for nicknames for Nikolai Sunagar Ovagar Sunagar, or was it the other way around? I can't remember which one it was. But the, my favourite was definitely the guard dog, and I'm a huge fan of that one. So massive props to you, Chris, uh, for that particular one. I also liked Nosgard, and there was a few other really, really in-depth ones too. The system you play really makes your good players very good, and your very good players great. What well, fair that's what you should always be aiming for like when i the thing i've learned over the past couple of years when i was playing fm when i wasn't doing youtube for that two-year spell i started to learn more about i, I would do often say i did one with Liknia Reykjavik over in iceland um i think i might have tweeted about it at some point but what i did there is i literally got the team looked at what the best players we had were when we went in and i tried to build a tactic around those and that's a really good way actually if you want to learn to make tactics to do that pick any random team like from nowhere, because it doesn't matter. And then go in there, look at the players, and try and build a tactic that works exactly to the strengths of the players you have, rather than having to bring anyone in. And I think that's what we've done quite well with Stockport here, frankly. And I think that's the most fun you can have with FM. And I'm very much looking forward to doing that with Building a Nation, wherever we do end up. Although it is starting to get narrowed down. I've had a lot of suggestions, tons and tons of suggestions. A lot of people sort of forgetting about the older foreign player limit thing, though. And that's very important, because we're going to have to be able to sign a load of those and register them. Because remember, in that save, I can't sign players from other clubs in the same nation once we're in the top flight um because obviously we want to weak we don't want to weaken the teams around us so yeah we're gonna have to rely on foreign players a bit so poland with its unlimited foreign player rule in the second season will be great apparently hungary it's up to 10 which is actually very very good there's a few others that are a little bit discounted by that now cyprus have got some good rules but i looked in an fm it says that you can only register two players from non-eu which is a bit strange because i thought cyprus had loads of non-eu players very very odd there if anyone knows anything about that, do let me know. So, yeah, we're looking at sort of Poland, Hungary, Cyprus, maybe at the moment. A um, few clubs in mind. Vasas in Hungary in the second tier. Uh, Polonia, Warsaw. That was one that was definitely highly recommended. And that's probably the front runner at the moment. I was looking at Austria and Turkey by, and Czech Republic and decided they're a little bit too high in the rankings because I want to be sort of between 15 and 30 because it gives you a lot more room to grow like we did with Serbia, like we did with Denmark at the time, although they're better now. And for example, countries like Belgium are way too high already. That, that's the main reasoning behind it, essentially. So it's looking like it's going to be one of the countries I listed before at the moment. And I'm proper excited for that. Right then, let's get into the games. We've had two games off camera and we're coming back today for Leicester and Leicester. And I think there's a Southampton game in between. Very important. So first up on the chopping block was Selhurst Park and Crystal Palace. And this was... Just lovely. It was one of those games that didn't really get started until the second half. It, it just sort of sprung into life. Pedro gave us the lead with a free kick. We'd been good before there, but we just couldn't break them down. Pedro's free kick on 61 minutes gave us the lead, and I thought, perfect, we can just sort of switch off and do what we need to do. Unfortunately, uh, Nakajima almost immediately equalised for Crystal Palace. Bit frustrating when you consider the number of shots on target they had, but it's just how it is these days, unfortunately. Thankfully, insta highlight from the kickoff, and Josef Beiser put us back in front. We then went further in front through Corbinian Gallice. A really nicely worked goal from him. He's just picking up goals off the bench. He's, he's had a tough first year for us. Fair enough, because uh, he's not played as much. But I think he'll get more game time next year, although there is one more thing to talk about that. And then Pedro added another goal to make it 4-1 in stoppage time. A really solid performance against the bottom club. And then it came to the derby against Manchester City. And i got to say, we should have won this game. City started this game like a house on fire. In a good way. Like someone's house that you don't like, for example. Bernardo Silva gave him the lead after just seven minutes. But I made a few changes. We went a bit more um, counter-attacking. We started getting really stuck in on them and hitting some early crosses. And then it just flipped in our favour. Liam Miller gave us an equaliser before Joseph Bicer's 83rd minute goal. Another one for Bicer. He still does chip in with goals. I just wish he was a little bit better. And I thought we'd done it. Seven minutes to go. We were 2-1 up against City. I thought this would be the game that pretty much wrapped up Champions League for us. And then Leon Bailey just ran through about five players and slotted it in the bottom corner. They do have that extra level of quality, which is a shame. And it won in man of the match as well. And it's a shame because I really do think we probably deserve to win in the end, the way we turn this game around. But it doesn't matter. A point was more than I'd sort of um, accounted for. 
And that leaves things looking like this. Chelsea, obviously champions. They're only nine points clear of Man United now. Chelsea started to drop off a little towards the end. Uh, we're five points behind Man United, but we are now four in front of Liverpool because they've had to play a load of difficult games. And they still, I believe, have to play Manchester United and Tottenham in their final two matches, which is very, very high um, in terms of the opposition, which means we're basically not only guaranteed to be in third play, uh, sorry, top four, because Tottenham, well, you know, they're six points behind us, but we've got a goal difference that's 19 better, so we would nearly wrapped it up. But also, we're in a really good position now, one win really, away from wrapping up third, and that's what I really, really want at this point. And speaking of that, I signed David Mello to a new deal. He's on, a, you know, an extra 20 grand a week, but no release clause. His release clause was 77 million, but now it's gone. And Mello, is, he's only 18, and he's already like three and a half, four stars in this team now. Um, he is going to be an absolute superstar, and I want to make sure that if he does leave, it's going to be for like 200 mil. And... Because we've got so much money in the bank from our previous transfers, I don't know, because sometimes this has happened to me in the past, where you have a load of transfer funds, but then it will tick over into the new year and the new budget, and the board will not give you any more money, or they'll take away some of the money. So I've decided to go and spend some of it already, and I've spent like £40 million, but I'm not going to show you that today, because there's four players I've picked up. Um, I'm going to show you that in the next episode, because in theory, if we're in a final or not, there'll be less stuff to talk about, whereas this one's going to be quite long anyway, so we'll go over those, those signings that I've already wrapped up in the next video. But there's some pretty solid players in there, including a goalkeeper because someone actually sent me two videos of their goalkeeper doing the exact same thing that Wilson did in the 90th minute as well in like successive games it's strange it's really really weird it's not happened to him since since I made that change but it is really weird and it's just occurred to me it's the start of the week and I completely forgot to thank new patrons and this week uh, Reverend Dumb has upped his pledge and new patron Peter Fisher uh, I apologize if I butchered your surname it's got a cool symbol over the s and I think it makes it like a sh sound so Peter or Peter Fisher awesome massive thank you to both of you and some of you might be aware that the the adpocalypse is back on YouTube again which means I'm even more grateful uh, for those of you over on fa over on Patreon at the moment that is incredibly awesome of you just to keep the channel going basically in these tough times for everyone on the YouTube platform again and everyone that's just watching the videos it is awesome i'm really looking forward to getting started with season 10 where hopefully we'll be in the champions league and hopefully i'll be able to get the drag out because m said she'd help me i might have to record it late at night but we will get this done we're away from home first and i'd prefer that in a way so we can try and nick an away goal and go back to edgley park with something to hang on to and to try and plan and pochettino is actually managing leicester city now so mellow suspended that much we knew hero from the last leg that's fine. He'll be back for the second leg. That's where we really, really need him. Let's switch switcheroo. I did rest a couple of players for the last match. Uh, for example, Pedro. And Abasolo is back again, and I would like to put him back into the team because I feel like he's important. Everyone else, for the most part... Uh, Sunago... Hang on. Do we want Guard Dog or do we want Makengo? To be honest, Guard Dog's actually probably been our best performing defender. Uh, he's actually performed average ratings higher than Roussel since he's coming, which is impressive. Um, Davidson and Aquebu. Slowy will be fit for the second leg as well. We're going to have to do with a bit of a makeshift away leg here. Baisa, Pedro, Abasolo, Davidson and Aquebu. Still a good solid lineup. Uh, both of their Dimitrov, Roussel, uh, Guard Dog, Duran Duran, and Wilson in goal. At least we will have the first choice players in that role back for the second leg. So we'll have Mello and we'll have Slowy back. So hopefully, if we can just get through this one with a solid centre midfield pairing, we should be okay. I think we're going to go with that for our bench. Given our propensity to get left-back injuries, I'm going to make sure we've got ETS on the bench just in case. So Gadice, Makengo, Dyer, Stubbs, Lazaro, ETS, and of course, Liam Miller. Let's see what they're going to do. Hopefully, it's a system we're used to. Okay, that's fine. At the end of the day, if we go out, we go out. It's just one of those things. But we're going to give it our best shot because this is a really good opportunity. Leicester are struggling in the league. Right then, let's go. Um, All I can say is good luck and Godspeed. We, we just need to be solid today. I feel like we're, we're definitely a better side than Leicester at the moment. That's for sure. Oh God, please not an early goal. Well played. Good block. We just need to be good, you know? I want to see us score a goal. I wonder if there's a way we can exploit that and get them to keep... But they've already got five fouls committed so far. They're really going in hard on us, which is why both are injured. Oh, they've lost it! Aquebu, can he slip it through for Baisa? Saved by Swain. Leicester again, struggling there. Okay, good. They've committed so many fouls. And Pedro's put it in. It was bound to happen eventually. The amount of fouls Leicester have conceded. Seven fouls so far, but also three yellow cards. And Pedro scored. That's our away goal. That's what we needed. His 28th of the season. Great free kick. Keeper doesn't even move. It just flat-footed. Falls over. 1-0. Might even slow the tempo down a little bit. Try and uh, induce a few more fouls off of them. Maybe get another, you know, get a red card or something just to kill the game. Bastion, please not a long shot. Ronnie Lopez. Bastion. Oh, God. Oh, we got away with it there. Okay. Um, 1-0 at half time. The free kick's all that separates the team. We've probably been slightly better, but that's interesting. I'm going to have Davidson do a bit more dribbling. We're just going to have our players in general dribble a bit more. I think it might allow us to win a few more fouls. You know, this is two legs. So I want to make sure that if Leicester are going to muck up, 
then they get some red cards and suspensions for the second leg, when we'll have our full strength back. Bofa, looking long. Bicer wins it. It's going to drop down and... Oh, Benkovic, there you go. And it's, there you go. Second in the card after two seconds, back to practically, of the second half. Looking into the channel. Well, one. Abasolo picks it up, goes past one man. It's got options now. Pedro's one of them. Davidson's another one. And he's scored. It's 2-0 here at the King Power Stadium. Andy Davidson's first goal of the season. And uh, Abasolo. Lovely, lovely stuff. 2-0. Uh, on 70 minutes. If we can hang on and get a 2-0 victory in the away leg, this would be quite something. Abasola just running through, finds Andy Davison. Lovely patient work outside of the foot, 2-0. Let's just sit on this now and rest for the rest of this match. Davis, it's fine. If you just want to let him shoot from... Oh, come on. Edge of the box shot goes in the bottom corner and it's 2-1. You just can't seem to stop them from scoring. Davison nearly gets it clear here. Good block. Ball falls back to Tom Davis in this position. There's enough players around here to really prevent that. He shouldn't be able to score from there, but he's put it in the bottom corner very nicely. It's a shame, but uh, can he find a ball through? Bicer! Ah! There we go. 3-1. Three, Three away goals. Back our two goal leaders back. Pedro puts it ball. 23rd goal of the year for Josef Bicer. For a guy I criticise an awful lot, he does have a habit of coming up with important goals for us. It's what I would say. I just feel like a striker that's just that little bit better would be on sort of 35 by now. But Josef Bicer is still young, remember? And he's doing a great job for us over the seasons. It's 3-1 here away from home. Colossal. There we go. Leicester City 1, Stockport County 3. We are very in very, very good shape now. Pedro, Andy Davison, Josef Beiser. 3-0 oh, would have been better, but 3-1 is still a very, very strong lead to be taking back to Edgeley Park for a second leg where we'll actually have a stronger team out. Yes! Come on! I might have to suit up for the final, lads. Not that we're there yet. Anything could happen in that second leg, and we know it. So, so Hunting off camera. I'll join you guys in a sec. Right then, so we had one game off camera, and I tell you what, I don't know what it is about playing Southampton, but they just seem to be able to get goals from basically nothing, and it's frustrating as all hell, uh, to be honest. So, Serge Gnabry gave him the, uh, the lead just before, well, after 15 minutes, a ball lumped across from one side of the pitch to the other, Lazaro did not track his run, bad mistake, and Gnabry just finishes it perfectly, uh, gives him the lead. Thankfully, on the stroke of half-time, Liam Miller did equalise for us, we then won a penalty in first half stoppage time, which Miller unfortunately missed, bit annoying. Um, and then in the second half, Nabry managed to cut inside, go past the winger, but he was still kind of there. He just bends one straight in the top corner. They, no matter what you do against Southampton this season, they just seem to score goals against us. It's frustrating because we're just not giving them opportunities. But there you go. Thankfully, though, we were able to get level through and at Abasolo. Garrice broke down the wing, whipped it across, and there was Abasolo to make it to all. Before David Mello, the ball was uh, placed into the central area by Abasolo. Mello gets it out of his feet and bends one into the bottom corner for 3-2 to Stockport County. And that wrapped us up a Champions League spot. There's no use beating around the bush here. We're home to Leicester. 3-1 up from the first leg. It's all on us, really. We basically... I mean, what on earth? We, we could lose 2-0 at home to Leicester here and still go through. So, a few little changes can be made. Thankfully, Slawi and Mello are back fit again. Bicer... Why does it want to put him up? I actually rested him for the last game. There we go. Bednar, it's not worth the risk to put Camille Bednar in there. We're going to go with Dimitrov for today, uh, since ETS played the last game. Um... So Guard Dog and Morgan Roussel will come back in, which is nice. Everything else is looking pretty damn solid. We're basically as strong as we can get. So Bicer, Pedro, Abasolo, Melo, Slawit, Bofa, Dimitrov, Roussel, uh, Guard Dog, Duran Duran, and Wilson in net. And on the bench, Hume, Bednar, Davidson, Miller, Makengo, Akwebu, and of course, Gadice. We don't need to take the game to Leicester. We just need to come out here and play our natural game. Don't need to overdo it. If we fall behind, it's fine. We just have to accept that, you know, they might get an early goal. But the longer we can keep them from scoring, the better, really. Slawi, can he cut inside and have a shot, maybe? He's all the way through! He's put it in the top corner! Abderazak Slawi! Wow, that is why Slawi is in this team. He just has the ability to do that occasionally. This is a weird one, actually. Taking it short... Everybody's in the box. We're all offside, so he's got a lot of work to do here and just dribbles through and bends one beautifully in the top corner. Seventh goal of the year for Slowey. We're now 1-0 up. David Mello's usually good at pinging these ones into the channel. He has done. Dimitrov. Bicer! Bicer! Oh, what a double save from Swain there. That was world-class goalkeeping. Only takes one moment. There we go. Mello does well. And Slowey does even better. Come on. Oh, pings it. Josef a one-touch finish. Yes! We are going to a European final, lads. Slawi, Bicer. Oh, and Slawi's had a really, really top game today. He's just been putting in a shift in the midfield. Winning balls back, dribbling like mad. An absolutely inch-perfect ball. Bicer doesn't even need to take a touch here. Just slips that home. It's 2-0, 5-1 on aggregate. Liverpool, it's going to be Liverpool. That's going to be tough. But just getting there is something else. Absolutely flawless. Slawi having an absolute show. 
Bisa with a finish. I'm going to try turning it on to uh, um, hit early crosses in the second half just to see if it has an effect when we're doing well as well because we're, we're going to win the tie now, you'd feel. I think it actually works better with Liam Miller. So I'm going to bring Miller on just to see if... Because we've done nothing since we made that change. I'm just curious to see how it works in certain games. Abasola's bruised his thigh. I, I don't want to take any risks with him at all, although we don't really have much option. But I might get Mello off though because he is looking absolutely cream crackered. So on will come Hume. Dimitros free kick. Oh, it's in. It's 3 nothing. Stockport County. 6-1 on aggregate. Ivan Dimitrov, wonderful free kick from him as well. This tie. We've not been good since I switched to that. So that's definitely something that doesn't really work in games when you're on top. It's definitely something to try when you can't get the creativity right, though, as it causes some chaos. Bison might fancy a little run. Abbas they're allowing Abasola to run through, which is the issue that you just don't want to do that. And now it's a penalty as well. Miller will take it. Hang on. Is there anyone that I would rather take the pen? Should we be cheeky and let Wilson have a crack? Someone said, let your goalkeeper take a penalty or two. Well, we're going to give it a try. Um, we're 3-0 up here. We're going through anyway. Go on, Wilson. Have a crack, son. And he scored it. There you go. Stockport 4, less than nil. Wilson scores. It's, it's very, very disrespectful, isn't it? But we're 7-1 up on aggregate. And Wilson now scores his first goal for the club from the penalty spot. And the keeper nearly had that, but he doesn't in the end. It's 4-0. And Wilson, my friend, you're welcome. We're, we're going to be in a European final. And it's going to be against Liverpool, who have won 2-0 against Nice over two legs. And Duran with a massive tackle there. Liverpool's going to be tough. I know that. But just being there is going to be spectacular. Slowey, Bicer, Dimitrov and Wilson with the goals. Dimitrov's had an absolute wonder game. But Slowey, I thought, was fantastic as well. Yes! I'm going to have to get a suit jacket on in a minute, lads. That means the Leicester game on the final day of the season will be off camera. Because I want to concentrate mostly on the final. Oh, yes. Oh, by the way, we got our budgets through. £77 million transfer budget, £1.4 million in terms of wages. So I'm kind of glad I made those signings, and I'll show you those in the next episode. Come on. The final's actually at Wembley as well, and it's going to be an all-English final between Stockport and Liverpool at Wembley. Um, and we got £2 million for that. So next episode, we're going to do Leicester final game of the season off camera. I mean, if we can beat them 4-0 in the Europa League, it stands to reason we could probably beat them in the League 2 to wrap up that spot. But you never know. And then we've got a nice little break before the Europa League final against Liverpool. That is going to be quite something. I'm very much looking forward to it. I didn't think we'd get this far in our first season. Weirdly, that was our... The, 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 the easiest tie we've had was actually in the semi-final. That's really, really weird. I will take it. Yes! So, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like on the video to help other people find the channel. That would be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button too. That will be fantastic. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Final episode of the season. It's the Europa League final against Liverpool. Predictions. Drop those in the comments, lads. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.